SpaceX just activated something that has competitors panicking. On September 13th, Pad 2's flame trench system went live, revealing why V3 Starship is breaking physics. We're seeing dual flame buckets, Raptor 3 engines, and mysterious tank configs that dwarf current rockets. The shocking truth. While SpaceX rushes toward December launch, their biggest competitor just got a tiny $1.3 million contract. Blue Origin's New Glenn faces delays. Northrop Grumman canceled missions due to damage. The gap isn't closing, it's exploding. Let's dive right in. What happened on September 13th wasn't just another SpaceX test. It was the moment the space industry realized how far behind they really are. When that controlled stream of water shot upward from Pad 2's flame trench, engineers worldwide knew they were witnessing something unprecedented. The initial reaction was confusion. The water flow seemed weaker than expected, leading some observers to question whether the system was working properly. But industry insiders quickly understood the truth. This wasn't a bug. It was a feature that revealed SpaceX's revolutionary approach to launch infrastructure. Unlike Pad 1's dramatic steel plate system that creates those spectacular water explosions we've all seen, Pad 2 operates on completely different physics. The dual bucket design doesn't just handle the massive forces generated by Starship's engines. It distributes and redirects them with surgical precision. We're talking about a system engineered to withstand not just one launch, but thousands of them over the coming years. The numbers behind this achievement are staggering. SpaceX first tested this concept at their Massey facility, but Pad 2's version represents a quantum leap in scale and capability. With two flame buckets instead of one, it effectively doubles their energy dispersion capacity while setting the template for every future Starship launch facility from Starbase to Cape Canaveral and beyond. This wasn't just a test. It was a declaration that SpaceX has solved one of rocketry's most fundamental challenges, how to build infrastructure that can handle the extreme forces of next-generation propulsion systems. But the real shock came from what SpaceX wasn't talking about. While everyone focused on the water test, the most significant developments were happening quietly at the Star Factory, where components for V3 Starship were revealing the true scope of this transformation. New images from the production facility show tank structures unlike anything previously seen in the Starship program. One component features a column and head design that immediately caught the attention of aerospace engineers worldwide. This isn't just another header tank. It's a completely reimagined approach to fuel management that weighs approximately five tons and represents a fundamental shift in how Starship handles propellant. Even more intriguing is the massive component spotted in the aft section of new prototypes. Weighing in at roughly 10,000 pounds, about 4.5 tons, this upgrade signals SpaceX's relentless push to maximize both capacity and efficiency. Every modification points toward a vehicle that doesn't just improve on current capabilities, but establishes entirely new performance categories. The technical specifications read like science fiction made real. Raptor 3 engines delivering thrust levels that seemed impossible just years ago. Redesigned grid fins that optimize aerodynamic control during re-entry. Upgraded catching points engineered for the precision required in booster recovery operations. The integration of hot staging technology and fuel transfer tubes that enable orbital refueling, the holy grail of space operations. Elon Musk wasn't exaggerating when he called this a complete redesign from the ground up. V3 represents the culmination of everything SpaceX has learned from previous iterations, packaged into a system that could fundamentally alter humanity's relationship with space. The timing of these developments has created an uncomfortable reality for SpaceX's competitors. While Pad 2 undergoes final testing for December operations, the rest of the industry faces a sobering assessment of where they stand. Blue Origin's situation perfectly illustrates this challenge. After years of development, New Glenn finally approached its debut this year, only to immediately encounter delays that push timelines further into uncertainty. Their recent selection for the military's Regal program, worth $1.3 million, represents important validation of their long-term potential. But when compared to SpaceX's operational tempo and revenue generation, the gap becomes almost incomprehensible. 
The contrast becomes even starker when examining recent mission outcomes. On September 14th, SpaceX flawlessly executed Northrop Grumman's Cygnus resupply mission to the International Space Station. Falcon 9 lifted off from Cape Canaveral's SLC-40 at 6.11 p.m. Eastern, deployed the spacecraft perfectly, and recovered its booster at landing zone 2-another routine demonstration of the reliability that has become SpaceX's trademark. This mission carried particular significance beyond its flawless execution. The Cygnus spacecraft, designated NG-23 and named SS William Willie McCool after the Columbia disaster hero, represents Northrop Grumman's first ISS delivery since August 2024. The extended gap resulted from NG-22's cancellation in March due to transport damage. A reminder of the operational challenges that plague SpaceX's competitors while the company maintains near-perfect mission cadence. The upgraded Cygnus XL increases payload capacity from 8,500 to 11,000 pounds, carrying critical supplies including semiconductor growth materials, cryogenic fuel tank equipment, and pharmaceutical research that could lead to new cancer treatments. Yet even this achievement required SpaceX's Falcon 9 to reach orbit, highlighting the industry's dependence on the very company they're trying to compete against. The defense establishment has taken notice of these developments, leading to contracts that reveal both opportunity and in strategic necessity. Blue Origin selection for the Regal program, rocket experimentation for global agile logistics, alongside defense technology company Anduril, represents more than just another government contract. Program manager Daniel Brown confirmed the study will examine how to adapt Blue Origin's rockets for rapid global transport, with the ultimate goal of delivering cargo anywhere on Earth within 60 minutes. The military applications are obvious. Emergency resupply of forward deployed forces, rapid deployment of critical equipment, or humanitarian aid delivery to disaster zones. But the technical requirements for such operations extend far beyond basic rocket functionality. Success demands the kind of operational reliability, rapid turnaround capability, and infrastructure maturity that SpaceX has spent years developing. While Blue Origin studies the possibilities, SpaceX continues demonstrating the reality of routine, reliable space operations. The $1.3 million awarded to Blue Origin and $1 million to Andril reflect the Pentagon's interest in diversifying launch capabilities. However, these amounts pale in comparison to the operational scale SpaceX has achieved. The real question isn't whether competitors can eventually develop similar capabilities, but whether they can do so quickly enough to remain relevant in a rapidly evolving market. This dynamic creates pressure that extends beyond individual companies to national security considerations. The United States benefits from having multiple capable launch providers, but the reality of SpaceX's technological advancement means that gap is widening rather than closing. Pad 2's development represents far more than a single launch facility. It's the prototype for a global network of advanced space infrastructure that will support humanity's expansion beyond Earth. Every system integration, every operational procedure, every design decision made here will be replicated and refined for implementation worldwide. The mechanical systems demonstrate this forward-thinking approach. The massive chopstick arms installed earlier this year have undergone extensive testing, cycling through lifting, lowering, opening, and closing motions with industrial precision. These aren't just tests. They're rehearsals for operations that will become as routine as aircraft maintenance at major airports. The Booster Quick Disconnect Systems activation marks another critical milestone toward operational readiness. Combined with the gas system testing that released brief venting sequences over the same weekend, these validations confirm that Pad 2 is rapidly approaching full operational capability. The timeline remains aggressive but achievable. Current projections point toward V3's debut before year's end, with December emerging as the most likely target assuming Flight 11 launches in October without major complications. B-18, the first V3 prototype, nears completion and should begin its own testing regimen soon. S-39, the companion upper stage, approaches readiness for stacking operations. This coordination between vehicle development and infrastructure preparation showcases SpaceX's operational maturity. 
while competitors struggle with basic reliability challenges. SpaceX orchestrates multiple parallel development programs with the precision of a major manufacturing operation. The accelerated schedule reveals SpaceX's confidence in their revolutionary design while creating enormous anticipation throughout the spaceflight community. The September 13th Deluge system activation was merely the opening act of an intensive validation campaign that will stress test every aspect of Pad 2's capabilities. Upcoming weeks will showcase the full power of these systems. The Deluge system will be unleashed at maximum capacity, the Flame Trench pushed to its operational limits, and critical systems validated through comprehensive checkouts. Each successful test brings V3 closer to its historic debut flight. The stakes extend beyond corporate competition to fundamental questions about humanity's future in space. V3 represents the culmination of years of development, billions in investment, and the accumulated expertise of thousands of engineers working toward a common goal. Success validates SpaceX's approach of rapid iteration and calculated risk-taking. Any significant setback provides ammunition for critics who argue the company pushes boundaries too aggressively. But this criticism misses the essential point. SpaceX's rapid development cycle isn't recklessness. It's a carefully calculated methodology that treats every failure as valuable data for the next iteration. Every success validates their approach while advancing capabilities that seemed impossible just years ago. The booster catch system, orbital refueling capability, and integrated fuel transfer tubes aren't just impressive technical achievements. They're building blocks for missions that will fundamentally expand human presence in space. Mars may not be getting physically closer, but our ability to reach it certainly is. While V3 development captures headlines and imagination, SpaceX continues demonstrating the operational excellence that makes their ambitious plans credible. The routine success of missions like the September 14th Cygnus launch illustrates their dual capability. Advancing revolutionary technology while maintaining flawless execution of current responsibilities. The mission details reveal the precision that has become SpaceX's hallmark. Cygnus will travel for 60 hours before arriving at the ISS at 6.35 a.m. on September 17th, where it will be captured by the Canadarm2 robotic arm and berthed to the station. Unlike Dragon spacecraft that dock autonomously, Cygnus requires this more complex capture procedure, demonstrating the international cooperation that makes ISS operations possible. The spacecraft will remain attached uh, until March 2026, when it will undock and burn up during re-entry, following the planned obsolescence that characterizes current cargo operations. But even this seemingly routine mission carries critical importance. The 11,000 pounds of supplies include materials that could lead to breakthrough cancer treatments and advanced semiconductor research. This seamless execution of complex operations while simultaneously developing next-generation capabilities demonstrates why SpaceX has become indispensable to space operations worldwide. They don't just compete with other companies. They enable their competitors' missions while continuously advancing beyond their reach. The result is a competitive advantage that grows stronger with each successful mission, each technical breakthrough, and each demonstration of operational reliability. As V3 approaches its debut, this foundation of proven excellence makes even their most ambitious claims credible to an industry that has learned not to bet against SpaceX's ability to deliver on seemingly impossible promises. So here's where we stand. SpaceX has just activated infrastructure that makes every other rocket look obsolete, while their biggest competitors celebrate million-dollar research contracts. The gap isn't just widening, it's becoming a chasm that may never close. But here's the twist nobody saw coming. While everyone focuses on the December 3 launch, SpaceX is already planning what comes after. Industry insiders whisper about developments so advanced they make V3 look like a stepping stone. What happens when this level of capability becomes routine? The September 13th water test wasn't just about Pad 2. It was SpaceX proving they can build tomorrow's infrastructure today while competitors struggle with yesterday's problems. We're not just watching rocket development anymore. We're witnessing the birth of humanity's interplanetary transport network. The real question is, are you ready for a world where Mars is closer than most international flights? 
What do you think happens when V3 launches in December? Drop your predictions below. And if this blew your mind, smash that subscribe button because Future Space is tracking every twist in this space race. The next video reveals what SpaceX is building that even NASA doesn't know about yet. The future is launching whether we're ready or not. NASA's Artemis program is bleeding billions while facing massive delays. But aerospace expert Tim Dodd just exposed a superior alternative that SpaceX could implement right now. His stubby Starship design eliminates 400 tons of dead weight, cuts refueling missions in half, and provides 700 meters per second more safety margin. The math is undeniable. This approach is faster, safer, and dramatically cheaper than NASA's current architecture. Yet NASA continues pouring taxpayer money into their flawed system. Why reject a proven better solution? Let's dive right in. To understand why these alternatives matter, we need to examine NASA's current plan, and the numbers are shocking. The Artemis mission architecture reads like a logistical nightmare. Before any crew launches, SpaceX must first send a storage depot to Earth orbit. Multiple tanker flights then carry fuel to this depot. The uncrewed Starship HLS launches separately, docks with the depot, refuels, and only then begins its six-day journey to lunar orbit. That's three separate operations before astronauts even leave Earth, and each step introduces complexity, cost, and potential failure points. The situation becomes more troubling when you examine the hardware. NASA's Orion capsule weighs 26.5 tons, nearly three times heavier than SpaceX's Crew Dragon at 9.5 tons. Yet Dragon offers 50% more interior space for astronauts. As aerospace expert Robert Zubrin puts it, NASA built an elephant when they needed a racehorse. The engineering constraints create additional problems. The SLS rocket cannot deliver Orion to low lunar orbit with enough fuel for a return trip. This limitation forced NASA to design the Lunar Gateway Station in high lunar orbit, essentially a $15 billion workaround that doubles the fuel requirements for any moon lander. Zubrin's assessment is blunt. This Rube Goldberg solution will cost billions and delay Artemis for years. The financial reality supports his concern because each SLS launch costs approximately $4.1 billion compared to 